Hello, and I will talk about the antibiotics and something I look, uh, do the Zoom, but however, there is not video, so I will be drawing the blackboard some of the important stuff. So, first of all, uh, we know that antibiotics, this is, we say, it's a metabolic material generate generate from one microorganism and used to uh, kill or inhibit another microorganism. Now here, this microorganism, usually it's fungi. And this microorganism most of the time is bacteria. Okay, now curing, we usually say it's a bactericidal status. And uh, bactericidal inhibit, we call it a static. So we have a terminology for that. Now inhibit, usually we will say it's extend lag phase time and the bacteria is still there is still survival okay so those are the things i want to mention now fungi penicillin is the right to bacteria let's say e coli okay so this is the concept now i want to mention something the mechanism behind uh, behind that. So the mecha mechanism behind that, there is a symbol listed in the textbook, encoding number one, which is uh, attack cell wall structure. Of bacteria. Now I want to mention number one, this is the most safest way for human beings. Because human do not have human being cell, animal cell do not have the cell wall. Bacteria cell have the cell wall. Okay, so that's number one. This is safe. Number two, this is studied a lot by the history, by the scientist area. We call it a good example. A good example, it will be called beta lactam drugs. And a uh, uh, good example is penicillin. Okay, so what's the story for that? And I want to move this a little bit right here. So, what's the story for that? This is a beta. Lactam ring for all of these penicillins, which is looks like looks like that. That's a better lactam ring. Now this will be attacking, which is we call the NAG. NAM, they combine together, have a cross linked with amino acid. How we call it? What's the name for that? Do you still remember? Peptide glycan. Okay? So let's say I draw right here. They are attacking Pep glycan. What is their really attacking points? Is actually attacking this bridge. So they are attacking the cross link between the uh, uh, attacking the bridge between the two peptide glycan chain, which is linked to form peptidine glycan. 
you know what is NAG? N acetyl glucosiami and N acetyl muriamic acids. Those are two modified sugar and cross linked with each other. Those two peptides, they have to be cross linked with the bridge. And this beta lactyl ring, which is attacking that bridge. Now, where are they really attacking? They are attacking the enzyme to forming the bridge. Help forming the bridge. Now, what's the name of this enzyme? This is called penicillin binding protein. Now, why would they have this name called the penicillin binding protein? Because when they do the penicillin research, and they started to find this enzyme, that's why in the scientific area they call it the penicillin binding protein. Okay, so penicillin, actually, the beta lactam ring, penicillin, is attacking that bridge. So this is the beta lactam ring, and the penicillin is a good example. is the number one good example, okay? Now, number two, we're going to talk about is vacuomycin. Now, remember, when I said that we talk about the Cadiz, which is a clostridium difficile, we say it is, when we talk about the Cadiz, we say, a patient is using antibiotics too long, about a week. They have a water diarrhea, sinomembrane colitis. And because intensive use antibiotics, so all the normal bacteria in the intestinal area has been killed, and the clostridium difficile start to dominate. So we should not use penicillin. What we should use? We should use vancomycin. Is that right? Uh, we should use, use, use vancomycin. Now, why we can use vancomycin? Because the vancomycin is attacking. This is vancomycin is attacking an amino acid side chain. I use AA in nutrient and amino acid side chain of peptidine glycan, which is between. NAG and NAN. So, the, because vacuomycin the attacking area is different from penicillin, that's why vacuomycin could be an alternative way to solve this problem, although it sounds very ironic. Okay, that's a story. Now, let's say there's a patient, he, he used penicillin, he used vacuomycin, both are failed. Because it's very easy to happen is a, is a bacteria so-called resistant, or we say antibiotic resistant. The reason is, we have a, this beta lactyl ring, is that right? But some of the bacteria, they have all plasmid. Remember in the first, uh, in the first session of the lecture, we talked about all plasmid? They could be generated so-called beta lactam ring enzyme that is called beta-lactamase this beta-lactamase can actually hydrolyze this ring let this ring take it off so what happened the bacteria can become penicillin resistant or vacuomycin resistant Okay, if the bacteria has been resistant to both, what we should do? We have to use another one. That is called a bacitracin. Now, what are the components of the bacitracin? Do you still remember ADISC? In ADISC, is containing bacitracin. That's to prevent, uh, that's to differentiate the streptococcus ammonia uh, sorry, streptococcus pyogenes versus streptococcus aglactia. Okay, but 
why we can use a persitration? Because persitration, the persitration be is used to prevent the, we call it the peptidoglycan precursor into cell wall, which means you stopped the material to move into the cell wall to synthesize peptide and glycan. In other words, to prevent the material going inside of the cell wall to synthesize bacterial cell wall. So that's why we can have to inhibit the bacterial growth. But because it's only prevent the material coming in and not really do any of the damage. So basic tracing, we will say, the impact is bacteria static, which means it's only inhibited bacterial growth, but not really kill it. Okay, so this is some of the story right here. Now I want to talk a little bit back to talk a little bit about penicillin. Do you have a history about that? At the beginning is penicillin G. Penicillin G is acid sensitive. And you have to use IV injection. Now, I'm not sure you know about this. When I was young, like 30 years ago, we, when you take in penicillin, you can only do is muscle injection. Because you cannot already take because uh, it's acid sensitive. And the acid in the stomach area, the stomach acid is very low pH, will hydrolyze this beta lactam ring. Beta -lactam -ring. Okay, so at the beginning is penicillin G, acid sensitive, IV injection. Then the second step, they developed the penicillin V. This becomes acid resistant. But because of the large molecule, you still only can do is muscle, is IV injection, or muscle injection. Then they start to generally called amosilin. This is lots of you know about that. Amosilin is acid resistant, which is can be oral taking. Okay, that is why you right now, if you have any infection, let's say you have your teeth so sometimes hurt, people think it's a uh, it's a passaging cause of problem. You can, the doctor will say, have some amosilin. That's the reason why it can be oral taking, because it's acid resistant. But then what happened, because antibiotics use a lot, and it's a global risk. So all of these sometimes will fail the protection because of the antibiotic resistance. Therefore, there is a next one generally, which is a very famous one called the that's why mesocillin comes out. But unfortunately, mesocillin is using too much, including some of the hospital carelessness. Therefore, we have a very famous stuff comes out called the MRSA, called the MRSA, which is mesocillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. So this is a little bit of story about uh, about the penicillin. Okay, so you need to know the beta lactam ring is very important to attacking bacteria cell wall. A good example is penicillin and the back of mycin and the basic uh, and, and the basic tracing. Okay, but unfortunate, unfortunate, literally, it will be a problem generated because if you're using too much or if you're not using scientifically, it will become antibiotic resistant. Okay, so this is something we talk about the penicillin. Now, a very important thing I, I want to mention, for antibiotics, we want to make sure the dose is the lower the better. Okay, we want to make sure the dose is the lower the better. You shouldn't be using the dose is too much. Therefore, we have the MIC comes out. That's called the minimal inhibitory Concentration. Okay, so using this.
this test that we call the have E test. Remember the strip? We put an E strip there. We could do a curvy boa test. And we could use in C area dilution to do a tube test. Now, all of these we will mention again in the lab section. And the Kirby Boer test we will do in the lab. So I'll just keep talking about here very briefly, okay? Because we're going to talk about it in the lab again. Now, one more thing I also want to make, I also want to mention very carefully is bacteria, the penicillin, when the attacking cell wall structure for the bacteria, usually it will be very effective during the growing of the bacteria. Because during the growing of the bacteria, the cell wall synthesis is going to happen. That's why it's more effective. Once the bacteria already been formed, it is difficult to control sometimes. So this is for the attacking cell wall of the structure. Now, if any of these are failed, then what we should do? We don't have any, any choice. We have to use others. So. There is some other things which can attack, uh, attacking the blocking synthesis. Basically, we'll be attacking 30S, 50S structure. Now, I want to tell you what thing. Lots of the side effects will be generated. Why? Because human being cells have protein. OK? This is also attacking, which means you have a cell wall structure, cell membrane system. Okay? So that's why I'm, that's why this is a lot of side effect. For example, tetracycline, you have a yellow teeth. People using like a, a chlorophytical, that will cause bone marrow cells decreased, blood cells decreased, will completely damage you immune system. So others besides to attack in cell wall structure, if they attack in protein synthesis, we usually use it only for the life threatening situation. Which means if we don't use it, somebody gonna go into that. So we have to use it. Now others we mentioned in the lab in, in the zoom attacking like a DNA, RNA, replication Transcription is not going to be very effective because bacteria have so many mutations will be generated. So that's only for the lab. Now something for prevent, preventing like the uh, metabolic process, that is ma ma major for the sulfur drugs. So we're not going to mention too much here. But more important right here is the cell wall structure. Okay, now before I end, there's one more thing I also want to mention. Remember, when we are doing penicillin injection, we cannot directly give it. Because some of people will have allergy. OK, so you have to do a skin test to make sure the person do not have allergy for the penicillin. Therefore, if somebody is have allergy to penicillin, we call it sensitive. So that sensitive terminology is used for the human being. Now for the bacteria, how we say it? We say it's susceptible. So we don't say it sensitive, okay? That's a terminology I want to mention. Okay, so I'm going to end this section. And uh, you could look at the slides. So basically this exam two, the video is finished. So we have three lectures talk about bacterial disease and the one talk about antibiotics. And the exam will be posted on the eCampus um, next week, possibly on Thursday. And it's open book. You have three weeks to do. Okay, thank you.